Well, they've let us take control of the internet one more time. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Studio Rats Live Q&A with our special guest this evening, all the way from a very cold part of the world, and we'll find out more about that later. Please welcome Mr. Jack Rubinacci. He's that way. He's not that way. <laughs> Hello, folks. Rubinacci. <laughs> Used to be so called uh, Rubinac. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, welcome to our uh, live session this evening. Whereabouts are you in the world? I'm in Norway. In Norway, that's not as cold as it should be, actually, because at this time of year it should be really cold, but it actually feels more like autumn. Jack, tell us the name of your local beer. Oh, yes. <laughs> Do you, well, I'm amazed. I'm amazed that you remember that. <laughs> it's yeah. called Ass. It's called Ass. The beer yeah. is called Ass. It's oh, not it's a nice beer. Ass, oh, ass please. <laughs> Yeah, AAS, yeah. So, nice. yeah, that's that That actually is the oldest beer in Norway. It's one of the most popular, and it's brewed just around the corner, actually. I, mm. I, we're friends with, we sort of know the people that, uh, that work there. So, yeah, it's uh, but it's a really good beer, actually. It is there. It's a really good beer. Oh, it's good to have friends in low places, especially this. Yeah, no, we, we don't get any <laughs> no privileges with that. So, for those of you who don't know, uh, Jack has joined us on how many? Is it four songs now? Uh, uh, I forget. Four, th three, three actual songs and a fourth project because we did the Personas video in London last year. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, and and Wayne. Well, and and the next tune as well, which we're still waiting yeah. to get into a studio to do. Yeah, yeah. I like that, that tune. That's a good one. So rocky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, I think I think Bono wants it back actually, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good to see Daniel B in the mm. house. Um, in the house. Uh, he, he's in the de, de house. Um, so we're, we're going to have a few minutes while people join us and th this thing winds up. So, Jack, just tell us a little bit about you, how you came to be in Norway, your um, singing, songwriting and stuff roots. I, I'm going to guess, you know, I'm put, putting it out there with a name, with a uh, surname like um, Grubinacci. There's there's Italian. Oh, in very good. Yeah, that was a good pronunciation, actually. It's it's the double C that normally lets sort of that confuses people. It's like Rubinacci or Rubin, yeah, Ruben Stacci. Yeah, it's Rubinacci. Um, I started out sort of thinking about being a musician because of my dad. My dad's, a, you know, my dad's a, a full time gigging musician, has been since the age of 18. He's the guy you see in the lobby in the hotels, you know, he's the piano bar guy. Uh, so I, when I was a kid, I, I didn't grow up with him, but I, I sort of met him when I was 11 and I thought, well, that's a, that's a really cool idea to do that, to be a musician. So I thought, thought that's a good thing to do. I started at 14 writing songs, being in bands at school. Um, and then I just stuck with it. I, I just, you know, being a musician is like a dream that you just don't let go of. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just never let go of the idea of, you know, writing and it's, it's the same idea when Adam was 11, you know, when I was a kid. It's just the idea of that you, they allow you to record and write music and you're actually allowed to do it, yeah? So um, in bands in Birmingham, in sunny Birmingham in England. Uh, started, Were you born uh, in the UK? Bands. Were you What's born that? in the UK or born in... No, born in Rome. Born, born in Rome. Born in Rome and left when I was about one and a half. Went to Birmingham. Uh, my mom's from Birmingham and so that's where my experiences with bands were and all the rest of it. So in a couple of great bands um, in my early 20s, and then I decided that I just needed to do something else. So I left the band, which was, that was a that was an emotional experience because we were like brothers, you know. Um, and we were pretty good, a band called Honeyman. We were sort of a funk, funk, intense groove, we called it, pretty like a grunge funk sort of thing. Um, so yeah, that was fun. And then I left that and then eventually sort of wandered around doing gigs, opening for people like John Martin. And I, I did a gig with Baby Bird and sort of, you know, just wandering around. Like I was this guy with a guitar just wandering around the country. You know? um, and then I sort of, in my early 20s, I lived with Norwegians. And I sort of became really close to loads of Norwegians, actually. Um, they were studying in Birmingham. And so when they moved back, I was like, hmm, I'm not, what am I going to do? Because my, my girlfriend was moving back as well. And I was like, well, what am I going to do? So eventually drifting around like I was, I drifted to Norway <laughs> uh, in my late twenties and I've been here since. So that's why I'm in Norway. Beautiful part of the world. I've say I've only been very briefly, but absolutely. Where have you been? Oh, do you know what? It's it's one of it's one of those 
get in a car with chaperone type thing, get okay, taken yeah. to a music shop somewhere, go, where are we? Oh, you're there. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> lots, yeah, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. lots of those sort of gigs and just get ferried around a bit. Um, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a, you know what? I, I have been lucky enough as a musician. I've actually, I went on a tour in about 2009, I think it was. And they literally sent me everywhere. Like, I, you know, I'm talking everywhere. And it's a massive, it's huge, it's very long. <clears throat> uh, and I've seen m most of Norway. And I'm telling you, I was in the winter as well. So this was like late December. It is stunning up north. There are places that are just breathtaking, you know. I've had an offer to go to Bergen for a for a um you should do a it. demo gig. So yeah, definitely that's one that's one on, on the card. That's a beautiful but, city. But I will probably wait until the spring, if not middle of summer. <laughs> Is yeah. that for a brand? Is, that, is there a brand in Bergen? Yeah, it, it was it was for um, an antelope gig. Oh, nice! Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful place, Bergen. Mm. Do you know when I, when I was visiting Jack once? Um, it was the only place that I've ever been, and we went down to the water, and there was like an iceberg that went past. Yeah, <laughs> it's, like, it's mental. <laughs> did you shout how, how iceberg? Did you the the how did you remember the, the name of the local beer? That's that's astounding. Mate, well, one thing is beer. The second thing, <laughs> his name is Ars. I mean, how am I going to forget that? It's a really good beer, though. Uh, did you try it when you were here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I don't mind paying twenty pound a pint for. A... <laughs> Jeez, Ouch. mate, it's the most expensive country. I remember going uh, to a shop uh, somewhere. I, you know, Iceland is the most expensive beer I've ever drunk. Okay. Oh, my well, I, and the last time I went over to Jack, I reckon it was. I reckon I haven't been over there probably for ten. I can't remember. Well, I just say between five and ten years, and I yeah. remember buying a sandwich, and the sandwich cost me like twelve quid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what, Paul? We we have to say about the video that we made. We made a video for a song that um, duetting with Abby Abby F Jones. Yeah, yeah. I, I really like that tune actually. Um, and we were making a video. I I don't know who thought of this. I, I I'm I'm sure I had something to do with it. We were making a video outside, primarily outside, in January. Early so cold <laughs> it was like if you told me about that now i'd be like mm, can't we do it in like you know summer or something it was wasn't it cold Paul? it was it was reason. and then and then you did another video for abby where where we were in the mountains we were in yes. the mountains somewhere and like yeah. literally i took a step and i just like disappeared down yeah. to my bald head yeah just... <laughs> yeah <laughs> never seen so much snow really yeah. oh gosh yeah <laughs> This is either going to make me sound really intelligent, which doesn't happen very often. I doubt. I doubt this is going to happen. But Jack, you are born in Italy, lived in the UK, but presumably you have a passport by by nature of the fact that you live in Norway. Have you done Italian national service? Yeah, that's that's a very good question. Actually, I really like that question. Do you like that? Do you like that? I'm yeah, impressed. no, I like it because not many people know that there is Italian national service. So uh, I was 18 and I was at university. I went, I went to university in Birmingham and I got a phone call one day from my dad. And my dad, he's, he's not easily phased. He's a musician. You know, he's been there and done it. He's been around the world, you know, but he was a bit phased and I'm not, I wasn't used to it. And I said, hello. And he's like, he had to call my halls of residence, you know, which is the whole thing. I had to get called up, you know, from the second floor, you know. So I came down, I was like, hello. And he's like, look, um, you, know, I've, you know, we need to talk. And I'm like, what's wrong? He goes, the carabinieri are, are in the flat. There were, I think there was two or three carabinieri, the police, you know. They were in the flat. As my dad was talking, he's like, he's like I'm looking at them now. And they're talking about that you need to come over and do national service. And I'm like, national service? Are you mad? I, I'm, I haven't been in Italy. I haven't lived in Italy for... I don't know how many years. I mean, I, I, at that point, I hadn't lived in Italy for uh, maybe 12 years, you know? So I was like, I, I didn't even know the, because I was busy at university. I was like, Italian national service. I was like, that's, um, I, I, was, I it came out of the blue, you know? And so I had to go to the Italian embassy and I had to explain that there was a guy there called Franco who knew my family. And he's like, well, there's a law. I think there was a law that if you've been outside of Italy more than seven years, I think it was seven or I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. That's how much I know about the whole process or I knew about the whole process back then. <clears throat> and he said, if you've been outside the country, Italy, for more than seven years, you don't have to do it. And I was like, oh, so I got permission to not do it. 
Um, but I think I couldn't go back for a year or two. There was like a there was a law that I you can sign off and not do it, um, but you have to. I think you have to wait a year or something before you can go back. You know, uh, they take it very seriously though. Yeah, very yeah, no, and I I wow. understand why. You know, but you know because if you know why should I be exempt if other guys have got to go right? So I, I totally understand that. It, it, the whole concept was so out of the blue for me, though, because at the time I was just busy being an 18-year-old at university in bands, you know what I mean? I was like, Italian National Service. It came out of the blue, you know? But when my dad called me, I was like, oh, my God, this is serious, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're impressed now, aren't you, Paul? I'm, I'm really impressed. Well done, mate. Really good. They've got, they've got National Service here in Norway as well. Have they? Yeah. yeah. What, just for, yeah, uh, just, for, uh, just for guys or for girls as well? No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no. Actually, hold on a minute. Am I saying? I don't actually know. I think it's. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's just guys. I'm, I, I. I don't know. I might be wrong. Wow. Because I know I was in uh, Moscow a couple of years ago in, in um, Russia, and they definitely have national service. Yeah. No, it can't be girls. No, it can't be girls. I, I, I'm. I'm getting confused now. But yeah, they. 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 They have it. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. So. Um, <laughs> we've kind of talked a little bit about so how how did you two how did you guys meet because obviously i i met you J jack via paul on the first strangers wasn't it the first song yeah how did you guys meet oh look kenneth rustard rustard, hey. rustard both guys and girls apparently both guys and girls both guys and girls oh really that's interesting and at this that's point kenneth i'm going to say answer your emails <laughs> kenneth, I'm to hold of you. <laughs> I like that so Jack's got one of his meet? speakers in the background as well. Yes. Yeah. Can you can you see them? Uh, I just can see one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. One of them. yeah. yeah no, um, I love them. They're, they're really good. So so uh, yeah. So yeah. How did that happen? Well, you know what? So I was just I was just saying that uh, I, I did my first YouTube video where just today where um, I sort of started opening up about me and my career and stuff like that. Just today, I've been spending hours, you know, trying to get the right angle and everything. You know, I know you guys are. A professional is it, but I'm still trying to work the whole thing out, you know. So, um, and one of the video ideas that I'm going to be doing is the power of the importance of saying yes, and the importance of um, getting yourself out there. So, the first person you've got to say yes to is yourself, and then you know the importance of always trying to say, always trying to make it work so that you can say yes to a project or a collaboration. And it made me think about while I was thinking about this video, it made, I didn't do that video today, I did another one, but it's one of the videos I'm gonna do. And it made me think about how I actually got hooked up with DWB. Uh, and I think it's a wonderful story. I think it's absolutely brilliant because, you know, my career has been based on, everything cool that I've done has been based on the people that I've met. Like all the big opening slots that I've been, you know, that I've done before is because I met someone or I met someone in England. And a lot of the cool stuff that I've been doing recording wise with DWB is because I actually, um, about 2012, I went on LinkedIn of all places. I mean, LinkedIn, I still don't use LinkedIn much, but at the time I was like, look, let me get myself out there a bit. And so I emailed a bunch of people and one of the people that, well, one of the people that I approached was Greg. And we I said, hey, Greg, you know, I'm, which, uh, we should probably explain who DW. So, so DWB is my, my company with, with two other guys and Greg is one of those guys. So just to, yeah. Just to fill in. Yeah. Yeah. In yeah. 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 Mm. So I, I emailed Greg. Greg was kind enough to email me back and uh, sort of started that relationship. I, I clicked straight away with Greg and and I, I got invited to come over to meet with you guys. And, and again, that's another example of the power of saying yes, because I could have said, no, I can't be bothered to go to England. and meet, But I went, met you guys, absolutely loved the vibe. I just loved the whole situation and meeting you guys. And also, I think there was there was a certain element of missing England a bit and really enjoying working with English guys again, you know. Um, so I loved it, and I just as just have sort of been in touch with Paul uh, and and with the guys ever since in a sort of a, a background, you know, sort of capacity. But so that's sort of how we how we met, you know. Yeah, cool. and as they say, the rest. Is and it, yeah. yeah. Oh, you froze. But, you know, a lot of the cool things that I've done has, has been via DWB. And like I say, all the cool things <laughs> that I've done in my career, I've had nothing to do with my talent and, and all to do with the people that I've, that I've met. You know what I mean? Because I've met certain people in my, in my career and they have put me in situations, you know, sometimes I look around and think, how, 
how did I end up here? You know, this is great. How, how did someone but, with my mediocre talent end up in such a cool situation? You know, but I, I think like themselves. But, well, a yes, a you're underselling yourself, but I think that's the way. It, it sounds terribly cliche about the whole, you know, it's important. It's nice to be important, but it's important to be, it's more important to be nice. And I think that That's is good. so true about our industry. Yeah. Um, I've worked with a few people who I've thought, Oh my God, you are amazing players, but I don't want to have a beer with you. No, it's sure. You know what? Whereas, you know what? yeah, I, I, you, I, can, I can you can put up with someone's musical ina inadequacies on a gig. If they're nice, and yeah. you just go, you know, you know, I, I, you know we're on the, the 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 tour bus or the or the tour van or whatever. I've I've always I say that I was in, an, well, before we had the twins, I was in the same band for fourteen years, oh, wow. and I I was always a great believer in saying I am not a drummer, I am a transit van passenger because I spend <laughs> way more time in the van than I actually do playing drums on the gig. Okay. And nobody wants an idiot on the van, right? No, and nobody wants a dick in the van because you're in there a long time. You are you are stuck on that tour bus or in that van or whatever a very very long time. Yeah. You need to be a nice person. So if if you you know people can be forgiven the occasional fluff on a gig or whatever, but you can't be forgiven for being a complete no. a hole. But off. I, 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 tell, I, I tell you what, James, what I found in my sort of trajectory is I've found that I've been lucky enough to be in some very cool situations and I've fed with some cool people and I found that the, the more sort of higher you, I don't know, higher or what, I don't know how you want to call it, but the, the better the people you work with in terms of who they are and the nicer they are. I mean, that's, that's been my experience. That's been, my, you know, that's been my experience in, in, in my little sort of, you know, yeah. I reckon you're right. I think yeah. you're right. And I, and I think that's because there's there's no threat at that. Absolutely. Level. Those those guys know they are great at what they do. Yeah. And, and they're also they've also realised, you know, and, and say I, I'm not going to put myself. So certainly musically, I'm not going to put myself in any of the categories with the drummers that I worship because my view is I I sit at a drum kit and I don't embarrass the drums, whereas. You know, Simon <laughs> Phillips, Dave Weck, or whoever they play the drums. Yeah, um, those guys. I'm not a threat to them, but they can be. They can be nice to me. They they haven't got to be RC. They haven't got to yeah. be fun. You know, so when you meet, when you do genuinely meet your heroes, they can be nice. They can be normal human beings, and yeah. and it's and it's lovely when that happens. Everyone says, "Don't meet your heroes." I've only ever had one experience where I've met a hero and gone, "Ah, oh, he yeah. wasn't as nice as I was expecting." Yeah. Because that, uh, but you, but but in in terms of being nice, it's something that it started when I was in a band. I was in a band called Honeyman, and um, you know, one of the things that we sort of one of the sort of credos that we had was is that we never go on with ourselves. It was you know, even though we took everything we did really seriously, and we were we were a pretty good band, you know, but it was never allowed that anyone was was, was going to go on with us on with ourselves, either with us with the band or with the fans. It was always about that's not cool. And it's sort of it's something that I really sort of live by. I, I don't I don't you know I don't have anybody in my life that sort of let you know I that goes on with themselves because I think it's so important because most of the time it's uh, it, it's not necessary. You know what I mean? Go on, go on, you go. I was going to say the job's hard enough being exactly. a musician. Be, you know, um, bearing your soul on stage. Yeah. You know, yeah. like we all sing, we all play, we all we've all done that thing. We've all been on stage and and poured our heart out. It's difficult yeah. enough without anyone making it more difficult. Yeah, certainly, certainly in these difficult times we find ourselves in, it is incredibly difficult. Yeah, to, to make that's, a living. That's out. why I think you know when you when when you do gigs, and I think we can all we can all say this. It's really nice when you have people that you are working with with that gig that understand the dynamic that you're going through so if you turn up to a gig and people want to talk to you like as soon as you get to the venue they want to talk to you and they want to ask you questions and, you, and in your head you're just like you've got so many things going around in your head like set list and lyrics you know whereas when you when people understand the dynamic of that and they sort of let you be 
they let you go to your room they don't ask you too many questions um I think you really appreciate that, you know what I mean? Because they, they sort of know that in your head, you probably, you know, you're trying to act really calm, but in your head, you've got all these sort of thoughts about what you've got to do and what you, you know, what your set list, what you've got to say, you know what I mean? So I really appreciate it when you turn up to gigs and, and people sort of, they st- they, they're they almost a little bit standoffish because they're giving you your, your, your room, you know what I mean? Graham wants to know, James, who was it? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Uh, look, if, they're a dick, if they're a dick, name them. Okay. Name uh, shame. Okay. So um, it's happened twice. and I, I, Twice where I've met a hero. And the first person that I'm going to say who was an absolute was Alan Parsons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I can really, imagine that. I'm sorry, Alan, but but you were horrible. And I was only is, trying to be nice. Is Alan Parsons' project? Is that- yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. As in, what was, what was that? T- I, 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 to be honest, definitely not a hero of mine. That's far too proggy for me. But uh, well, yeah, but I, you know, I, I love my prog, don't I? You and, do and love the, that. He was, he was, he wasn't offensive, but he was definitely not. I'm sorry, if you're at Nam, you are, you are easy fodder. You are, you are there to be seen and to and to be with your your public, as it were. Mm, absolutely. Uh, and the other person, actually, at, again at the same show, was Mike Portnoy, drummer for Dream Theater. What a really? oh, yeah, really, yep. And and it's, you, it's it's prog, mate. That's what it is. I, I, I worship, <laughs> I worship the, the stool he sits on. Ooh. But what a yeah. So yeah, there you go, Graham. Um, beans spilt. <laughs> uh, Nasty. How, um, can right. any, how can anyone not be nice to you, James? You're, the, you know, you're one of the nicest guys in the business. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I have my moments. I'm I'm fairly sure I've had my moments, and I think. Uh, do you know what? I actually think I have this attitude now, because, um, because when I when I first moved to London, you know, I, I'm I'm a realist enough to know that I I was a very very back back home in Ipswich. I was a I was a fish in a pond. A lot of people, uh, you know. A biggish, biggish fish in a pond. You move to London and you are a tadpole in an ocean. Yeah. As as a musician. Yeah. And I I was lucky enough to pick up a couple of really good gigs, a couple of named gigs, and I thought that was it. And I might, in fact, I probably did, give it a bit too much of that, <laughs> and thought that the phone would keep ringing. And I thought because of this, I would get the gig. And and actually, I learned the hard way that when you're the new guy, you get in, you shut up and you play the gig. And if you make mistakes, you, you bury your head and you get on with it. You don't make any more. But if you're the one who tries to talk your way out of it, then the phone ain't going to ring anymore. And yeah, I, I probably found out the hard way because all those st- those sort of higher end gigs went away very quickly. So, yeah. I, I, I think I've learned, but I think I was probably yeah. about nineteen, twenty. So I was probably young enough to learn that yeah, lesson. Yeah. Of course, yeah. And I've got one, and I've got a, uh, and I've got a. It wasn't really a hero, but I remember I, I was touring once in a in a band that I was in, and we were we were supporting. Do you remember Shed Seven? Oh, oh yeah. mate, they were big. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were big. Yeah, yeah. And we were like the support band, and uh, uh, the lead singer was was a bit of a. And I think I think his name was Rick Witter. So we, you know, in, in the classic, in the classic uh, British, you know, rhyming slang thing. <laughs> Sitting, yeah. We know where you're Someone going, needs to take a Rick. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, you know, can I can I, t- can I tell you guys something? Yeah. What I'm when people ask me, what do you miss from from living back home in England? You know. I don't miss, you know, I can get hold of radio and, you know, we get all the programs. And uh, the one thing I miss the most is banter. And you and you try and explain that to, to people, what is banter? And it's just, I don't know, how do you explain banter? It's just a to and fro, you know? Especially English banter, which is basically yeah. insulting each other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love it. So just, just um, Jack, hmm. briefly tell the story about Strangers. Yes. Uh, Strange Film We Meet was was the first. It, I think it yeah. was actually the first Studio Rats track, wasn't it? With um, 
myself, Paul, and Dan on bass. And yeah, it, it was the first track, wasn't it? But what was yeah. hilarious was well, tell tell the story because I, I still laugh. I still yeah, still laugh. Well, yeah, I mean, well, you know, Paul. Sort of, we've we've had contact for a long time, and you know, every every now and again, Paul will get in touch if he's got something, you know. And uh, he got in touch saying, "I've got this, you know, do you fancy being part of this project? Uh, we're working with singers, and uh, I've got this song." And I was like, "Yeah, you know, any any time Paul emails, I'm I'm in because you know he's brilliant." So, um, I got this track sent to me, and I loved it. Like I heard it straight away, and it's one of the quickest songs I've ever written. I literally got it on my phone and as I was listening to it for the first time I started to come up with a melody and I was really excited I was like yeah I love this so um we got it together and you know got the got the song in shape uh, and Paul sent me the backing track did the vocal and then said you know I've got to get the drums on it I'll, I'll get James to get, you know to put the drums on it and you know I, I, I had no idea you know James called cool, you yeah, whatever you know and then uh, we did the video the, the track was finished it was mixed it was time to film the video and and uh I had to add my part of my video, which I filmed here in the studio, to your part. So I got your part sent over. And when I saw the video, I was like, hold on a minute. <laughs> I recognize that guy. It's James. Because <laughs> I've, I've been watching your videos for years because, you know, sort of trying to learn how to do the studio thing. I had to start from scratch. I had no idea. So what I did was I just spent years on YouTube learning. And you were one of the guys that I watched you know, like I recognized you, like just your voice alone. I recognize I've heard it so many times on YouTube, you know. So I thought, hold on a minute. It, <laughs> it's that, James. So I, I emailed the guys down the shop. I'm very friendly with my um, local music shop, Procom. Uh, so it's, it's sort of a place where I, li I like to go to hang, you know, not now, obviously, in, in this period. But uh, I'd, I'd normally go out and hang out there, you know. And I sent him. I sent him the video when we did it. I said, "You never guess what, guys? Look, he was in the video, you know." And they're like, "Oh, that's really cool, you know." Because obviously they watch your videos as well, because they sort of need to keep in the loop of, of all new equipment and stuff. So yeah, I was I was chuffed. I thought it was brilliant, you know. That's funny, mm -hmm. especially especially when you get. I got the, the the email back saying, "Oh shit, you're that James Ivy." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because it, you know, it just sort of it, it sort of throws you sideways, you know. It's like, hold on. <laughs> Uh, just to sorry, just to change subject, Terry. Yes, you'll enjoy that. Terry just said, just bought his positive grid spa camp, counting down the days till it arrives. Yeah. <laughs> you'll have fun with that. You'll have fun it, with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, right, should we move on from, from there? Because yes. my next my next question is, you know, as as we're getting to the recording side of things, Jack's got quite a unique way of recording now. Oh, okay. Which is using an iPad. Yeah. So, um, do you do I, everything I sort of, through the iPad? Yeah. Well, I, I sort of uh, about about a year and a half, about two years ago, uh, right. I I sort of was looking to do a live setup, and I wanted to use the iPad. So I primarily looked into iOS stuff for looping live, but I wanted, you know, I I used to loop years ago. I, I, you know, I, I did a big gig uh, in Bergen, actually. Uh, I opened for Joe Cocker in Bergen. Uh, and I used the whole looping thing, Ableton Live. I had a computer on stage. I had a percussion thing. I had um, uh, an um, M, what's that? Um, MBC 1010. MPC? FCB 1010 right. on the floor. I had a keyboard. I mean, it was. Just, I had a, an APC forty uh, to to trigger. I mean, it was just ridiculous. I mean, it was looping on. A, it was too much. It, I just couldn't deal with it. It was too much. So, I, I went away from that and I went back to the acoustic guitar. But then I thought, well, I actually want something more. Uh, so I started looking into the iPad and I started looking at you know stuff I could easily loop that was very simple. And then I started following people who uh, sort of like yourselves, but in the iOS world, you know really sort of big YouTubers. And I was like, actually, I really like this whole iOS situation. And the apps are really cheap, you know, and for me, that's sort of, you know, that where cost is, is, a, is a problem. I was like, well, I can get an app for like $15, $10. This is great. So I really sort of ventured into the whole iOS thing. And I've gone sort of all in, well, not all in, I'm still going to mix on, 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 on the computer. But as far as tracking uh, keyboards, beats, bass lines, even guitar, even you know certain guitars, uh, I'm sort of having a lot of fun on the iOS situation, and I and I'm absolutely loving it. You know, 
and, and one of the things that I love about the iOS situation is that there's a thing called um, audio, bus, audio Bus Forum. Uh, and it's just a bunch of really nice guys that are just really into the iOS situation. And they know everything, like any problem that you have, they know how to fix it. And I love that because you feel like there's somewhere you can hang out with people that sort of know what, you know, have got the answers to your questions, you know. So, yeah, I'm really getting into it. I'm also, you know, going to look into getting into, you know, going on stage when, when that happens again, you know, when things open up. Um, I think it has a lot of possibilities. This is a, an Air, Air 3. So that's a fairly new one. It's not it's not the newest. It's a couple of years old now, but uh, it's still quite new. And I think more and more music production is going to go down that route, especially now with the M1 chip on the Apple. Uh, that sort of means that apps can now be used on on the computer as well. I, th I think there's a there's a little gap there where I think that music production, well, a lot of music production is going to go down where people are sort of interchanging between the iPads and, and the computer. And I'm really into that. Um, I just, I, the one of the reasons why I sort of got into the iOS is because I find software can be very, very expensive. And I think that, you know, I, 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 you know, sometimes it's, it's difficult when you can't afford the bigger software, you know what I mean? Um, so the iOS situation has equivalents that sound great. I mean, guys, I don't know if you've sort of ventured down that route, but some of these apps are astoundingly good. Like what? What do you use? Because I've no. I mean, when I'm thinking about getting a, um, an iPad Pro, so this yeah. Is... Oh, mate. The, the, the trouble is, and I know you, Paul. I know that when you get into it, you're really, you know, when you get into stuff, you really get into it. Yeah, if you start I love getting into iOS. It's like a whole world, man. If you start hanging out in audio bus forums where they where they've got so much good information there, it really. It really can take you, you know, take you take over because I really get into it. Uh, I use, I've got so many apps. I'm actually constantly on that forum now because it's uh, it's Black Friday, you know. So there's constantly apps going for like five dollars, and some of these apps are absolutely incredible. So I use Cubasis um, as a door, which is new right. for me. I'm I, I'm coming from Logic, so I had to learn Cubasis. I had to learn the whole thing. Uh, there's a load of um, Beatmaker Three is another door. There's Nano Studio Two you can use. So there's there's doors you can use and then on top of that there's um you know plugins that you can sort of have as uh, au au sort of plugins where you bring them in like keyboard i mean the keyboard sounds oh my god there's some amazing keyboard sounds it's just beautiful like oh, it's just some fantastic like you I, I i wouldn't even consider going to the computer for keyboard sounds or you know the only thing uh -huh. i'm using the keyboard the the computer now is um is uh pianos like the, the larger files yeah yeah like yeah the, you yeah. know like the larger files like pianos or maybe strings i use some of the spitfire stuff um there's a place i don't know if you guys know of piano book no no nah. piano no. piano book is an amazing source it's an amazing resource basically it's a, a website where you, where they give away um it's a bunch of sound designers uh just people that love to sort of record and and sample and they give away all their their it's like a community you know and there are some incredible sounds on there so that's what i've used the computer for but for writing and actually this is interesting paul this this might interest you when i wrote strangers when well when we wrote strangers when we meet and i wrote the melody on top of that i wrote it so quickly i thought there's something there i need to look at why this came so easily and i realized that i enjoy writing over top lines uh, sorry over chords <coughs> i write i enjoy yeah. writing top lines over chords so now it sort of changed my songwriting uh, scenario because of that song. Now I get the iPad and I'll put down, you know, r some rough chords and I'll loop it so that then I, I can free myself of the instrument and just write a top line on top. Right. Uh, and that's sort of changed the way I write songs now. So I'm primarily sort of veering towards being a top liner rather than sort of, you know, trying to piece together the chords, you know? Oh, interesting. Very so interesting. How just out of interest, I mean, what's the, what's the track count that you can run on a on Cubasis? How many? I mean, there are there are there are sort of you know glitches. Uh, you yeah, can yeah. run, you know, you can run. I don't know. I mean, I've got to ten tracks. I haven't got okay. like to hold. I mean, there's some guys that you know run full productions. There are some glitches that you have to get around, and that's sort of part of the fun. I think it's not. It's almost like a. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's it's putting the hurdles back in the way again, like it used to yes, be. Yeah. And it's, and that makes it a little bit of fun. It makes it it feels like you're sort of you know you, you're you're you got to work with the computer rather than just sort of sit there and you know. We used to run before before I want I, I bravely or stupidly took a laptop on stage with us. I used to run Aria, the the oh, right. iPad, um, 
door. Yeah. Um, that. that was really, really good. Really stable. Uh, version two was very, very good. Yeah. Um, but because there are so many, you know, there's good hardware that will talk to your iPad. Like um, RM, lots of the RME interfaces will talk to iOS yeah. as well as they will. Um, oh, will they? Yeah. Um, oh. We used I used to use an, an RME interface, and my iPad was the main thing for our backing tracks. Yeah. And so what, what you play? You play a backing track or back different different backing tracks? Um, what I what I actually had because the band, it was backing tracks for the entire band. So I had a click track. Um, I'd have extra vocals, percussion, keyboards, yeah. brass. All, all kind of bounced to stereo so but i could at least then on the gig if we decided there was too much bass in the because some of the yeah. tracks had bass on them because the singer could then run around um i had control and each channel then has an eq and compressor on it if you want to mess with it and get you know yeah. into that sort of thing yeah, yeah but no, that's a great what, we then, what we then did was put it through eight individual outputs on the interface and then sent those eight tracks to the desk so whoever's mixing front of house had a certain amount of control as well wow. Yeah. which was great but we had a four and a half hour long session yeah and Did I never, could, crash? never crashed on me wow no, what i could do is i could jump to jump points depending on wh what order he wanted to do the set i could jump to certain points and wow. just jump yeah it was it was a really good system. The the only thing that actually let it down was the fact that you couldn't charge the iPad at the same time as having the interface yeah. connected, and that was where you it. That's, you can now, but you couldn't on the iPad. I think it was an iPad two I had back then. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. I mean that's that's interesting because I, I haven't ventured out on stage yet. You know, with it, and it's sort of like when you do, you've got to go. You know, you've got to be rock solid with it. You know. Um, but I, you know, knowing more and more now with the iPad, I, I'm absolutely going to go, you know, when I, when I venture back out or when it all sort of get back, gets back to normal, I'm definitely going to use the iPad because, um, you know, even if it's just for the atmospherics, like I use, I used to use a pedal. I used to use a big sky, um, oh, yeah, no. a big sky. And the only reason why I used that was to give you that sort of third dimension, you know what I mean? Just to open up the sound a little bit because, mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I love a guy with an acoustic guitar or a girl with an acoustic guitar. I can, I can sit there for a certain amount of time and listen to some beautiful acoustic music. But there are certain times when I wish that the sound would open up. You know, what I mean, where, where it's, you know, especially being someone who's into sort of, you know, arrangements and stuff like that. And so <laughs> I've used the big sky like I, I, went, I went on tour last year. I opened for Heather Nova and um, I went I did three gigs in well, Copenhagen, uh, Sweden and Oslo. And I ran a timeline, a Strymon timeline and i ran um a, a big sky a shrine big sky and the and the only thing i was actually doing there i wasn't it was giving some atmospherics so the yeah, way yeah. it hit the chorus so that when it hit the chorus you'd feel that sort of you know what i mean yeah, yeah. And so the setup that i'm putting together now with the ipad is something similar not to put not put the acoustic but so i'm going to use a foot pedal so that there's there's an app called um dream foot dream foot mm. and you can play chords from a keyboard on your foot on your right foot and it will run the chords you know, say like a nice keyboard a nice atmospheric keyboard so that's all i'm looking for is that sort of third dimension right. so i'm definitely going to use it because I, you know in this day and age i think it's you know why would you not <laughs> the technology is there you know so I mean, when I started ten years ago doing it, it was ridiculous. I, I would never go back to something that complicated. It was just, yeah. Uh, have you heard of the? Well, well there's two different. There's, uh, there's two different products. So Yamaha brought out the acoustic guitar, which basically has. So it's just an acoustic guitar. And it's got reverb, and delay, mm -hmm. and all this stuff built into it. And really? yeah, yeah, yeah. This <laughs> is like witchcraft. So you've got the guitar and literally it projects reverb so yeah. like acoustic. i've seen it actually and I've, I've heard it and gone yeah it's incredible it's incredible but there's but, also but can on. you choose when you want it i don't know i i don't know but there's also a product that these guys in nashville basically i th i think they invented it first and you know whether yamaha sort of took the idea or not i, I don't know but um 
oh, yeah, I wish I could remember the name of it. It's basically um, something you put on the back of your guitar and it basically does the same thing. It uses wow. the, yeah, it's supposed to be incredible. So, you know, for someone like yourself who yeah. does that sort of stuff. Yeah. I, I think, you know, I love playing. I mean, <laughs> so I love playing solo because you can sort of, you know, you can sort of dance around the rhythm and not worry too much uh, about being in time because you're in time with yourself. I love that. I love sort of, you know, I don't mind being the guy on, st on stage by himself. The only time that I don't like being the guy on stage by himself, and this is going to sound funny to you, is driving to the gig. Oh, I no. hate driving to the gig by myself. And that's because I was in bands for some for so long. And, part, you know, one of the best parts of doing a gig with the band was getting in the car and driving to the gig because you'd have a laugh, you'd have music blasting out. This was before I had problems with my ears. You know, the music would be on full. You'd be, you know, you'd be having a great time. It, it was all funny. Everything was funny. You know what I mean? You turn yeah. up to a gig and it was just all exciting and fun. Nowadays, when I do gigs and I do them by myself, I'm always in the car by myself. You know what I mean? Um, and that that's, I, I, I never like that. I always get this really lonely feeling turning up to a gig by myself. When I get there and I'm on stage and I'm, I have no problem with that, and then driving back, you're all sort of hyped up from, you know, from, from doing the gig, you know, but it's just, you know, you, you, I hate that driving to a gig by myself. If I had my perfect sort of scenario, I'd have a couple of guys, uh, I don't know, management or road, who you got on really well with that. Like, like we were saying, you know, the idiot on the bus, you got to get on well with them, you know, a couple of guys that you get on really, really well with, even if like mates and then just do the gig by yourself. I could, I could do all that. You know, I hate turning up by myself. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. I must admit, it, it used to be part of it, you know, you, you, you turn up in the van and uh, certainly early doors in the, the days of so my last band, it was turn up in very beaten up van and towards <laughs> the end it was turn up in really quite nice van, you know, <laughs> yeah. it, it wasn't, it wasn't always that way. Um, if we've got any questions uh, out from anyone out there, there's a few of you on online, uh, keep, get your questions into us because what always happens is we get towards the end of the hour and then the questions pile in. So if two minutes before about to finish, it all kicks off. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so if you've got any questions, do please uh, get them in either on uh, the Facebook chat or on YouTube. Um, we would love to be able to help you out. Uh, it could be, tech related song songwriting singing related anything like that we will do our best and if we don't know we'll make something no we won't <laughs> so I've, yes, I've got a question for you guys how did you get to the point where you guys are with your studio like is it just hard work is it because you love it so much i mean because when i see like just before we went on air we were talking guitars and like you could tell the year of the guitar from the serial number. I mean, that's crazy. How do you that's, get? Well, it's crazy or geeky, mate. It's crazy or, or incredibly. <laughs> I, but I oh, like, I it's, like it, oh, it's great at um at dinner party, mate. It's it's fantastic. <laughs> I can say. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it depends what you mean where with the studio because, you know, I, I from a from a you know a, a gear and acquisition point of view, this. <laughs> didn't happen overnight no. this is in my first bands at oh probably sort of 12 13 14 years old realizing that you, when you buy a 10 a 25 pound microphone from tandy it <laughs> isn't gonna make you sound like the guys who just been just come off stage at glastonbury <laughs> um and you think well hang on well why not and you then you know, like you, you go and hang out at music shops. Got the the guys at Whitmore's in Ipswich would would have been absolutely in, infuriated with me asking so many. I never bought yeah. anything. I never had any money. <laughs> yeah. But um, I asked a gazillion questions. You know, so so why is that SM58 the one that everyone uses? That and the truth of the matter is, half the time I go, we don't know. It just is. So, okay, yeah. I've got some money. Uh, I'll buy one of those then because that's what everyone wants yeah. to have. And all of a sudden you go, oh, I've got a decent microphone. And I still have that SM58 from when I was 14. Yeah. Because I just do. Yeah. Um, you know. So are, you, are, you, are you guys, oh, sorry, so, so, so are you guys interested in a lot of things or are you specifically like, this is what I love doing and I, I know like everything there is to know about it? 
I think the day I think I know everything there is to know is the day I, I lock the door and that's it. Um, because it's never going to happen. You're always learning. You're always, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that, that's a given. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. The, the thing is, I pick up things from people who don't realize they're teaching me. And that's that's the thing. You know, when someone says, "Oh, I do it this way," you go, "Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. That's, that's a good thing." That's oh. funny. We we did a video recently where James came over and 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 James said like I I record acoustic guitars like this. And I went no, this is so rubbish. I saw that. Uh, yeah, absolutely rubbish. And it was great. It sounded great. So I'm definitely you know next time that I do acoustic recording, I'm going to try that. So and, and stuff like that. But that but that's so, um, it's so true. It's so you know you're learning stuff all the time from your peers. But say from from you know now we have the the miracle of YouTube and you can sign up to pure mix or, or whatever yeah. you know you can watch our our heroes working yeah. um you can do mix with the masters did i ever mention that um you know all those sort of things are available are available to you we didn't have that when we were starting it was it was kind of you know you you go to do a university course and, and you realize that actually on a university degree course in this sort of stuff they don't teach you it they show you it yeah. but you have to learn it because that's the way you learn how to use a compressor or an eq yeah. Um, I, I, I am a self-confessed gear junkie. We all know that. Um, I love toys. I absolutely adore the stuff. And if someone said, when's your studio going to be complete? And I'll be like, never, because the next thing will come out and I'll go, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. There's, you know, guitar collections. I could, I could rattle off the, the number of guitars that I still want to buy, but I have to find them all in the same color. So Jen doesn't know I'm buying loads. It's <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's so true. That it's, is so true, actually. That's so true. Every time I get a guitar, not what I've said. Only buy black guitars. Yeah. You saw? <laughs> that's genius. I never thought of that. But and, you know, we've got go on, we've got a couple of questions. Sorry, but there, are, on. there are things there are things that I will always I, I'm I'm a gear junkie. So yes, while I'm always learning and I'm always doing this sort of stuff i suppose are there other things in my life yes yes i love traveling which is okay. ironic at the moment because we can't i love to travel um yeah. <clears throat> i want to get my little ones into the travel bug as much as i am because i want to show them the bits of the world that i love I, i'm very lucky to come to norway mate. definitely um i mean I've, I've been very lucky working on cruise ships and stuff like that i've got to see lots of nice parts of the world and be paid for yeah. it so um the travel bug is definitely part of it, but yeah, I, you know, I think you have to be dedicated to your craft and, and I do take it seriously. I, I'm, it is a job. You know, I come down here at eight o'clock in the morning and I finish by four and some nights I'm out here till 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night after the kids have gone to bed. Th those aren't that often these days, but that, you but know, do, the, but do you, you know, you know, when you're doing mixes, mm -hmm. because you know, this is sort of, you know, I'm interested in this because I, I, I've I've got a long way to go with this. But when you do mixes, do you feel like you've got your routine down, and that you probably will only make a few different choices, you know, as you go forward, you know, with with your work, or or are you always learning new techniques? Like for example, you Paul, you've gone from one door to another, mm -hmm. uh, and is that something you like doing, or, or was it something? Yeah, you, you keeps you like fresh. I think it keeps uh, you fresh. It keeps yeah. you fresh keeps you fresh i think I, I think so in terms of to get your pattern down i think it all depends where something's recorded so if james gives me some drums i know what james's drums sound like yeah uh, you know i'm mixing i'm mixing one of your songs at the moment which i'm doing some videos on obviously completely thrown me today i was just like te tearing my what little hair <laughs> <I had. laughs> uh, yeah very good <laughs> yeah just because it's a completely so i mean for guys that are doing it like you know every day on the same same console the same whatever and they're doing this every day bosh 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 drums 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 every day it's like yeah it becomes second nature but i don't i mean you, you're constantly constantly learning about stuff and i think what's interesting as well is certainly from my point of view i give myself different professionally at the moment i'm working with with four companies four four companies who all make software plugins and stuff and um hardware and so you know today i was mixing a track for for an actual job and it's the first time i've been able to use the plugins i've wanted to use on a uh, mix in uh, ages 
because I haven't been limited to one company's plugins. Not that these days it's a it's a limitation, but for example, I particularly like the Waves um, uh, uh, SSL bus compressor. Yeah, it's fantastic. I think the Waves SSL bus compressor is the <laughs> best of the SSL bus compressors. Sounds great. A job, a job I was doing last week, I knew I wanted to put an SSL bus compressor on the drums, but I had to use a different one. <laughs> you know, so, so I had to it had to do things a little bit differently to how I would normally do it. If I'm just mixing drums and it's for a for a track, and it's my kit, I'll do it on the console because it's set up. Yeah. It's set up and it sounds like my drums. Um, but do you guys? But do you guys? Do you guys get excited about sort of introducing new plugins into your sort of chain? Nah, plugins. No. I, yes. Yeah, plugins because. The thing is, what we do, and and it sounds it sounds really flippant, and I don't it's mean it. To sound not, flippant. It's not meant to at this point, but we meant to sound flippant. But we get given everything that comes out. Yeah. So I've got over a thousand plugins in my plugin folder. Yeah, and it's just like oh, it's another compressors, and it's just the like reason why I, the reason why I ask that is because I'm trying to get to a situation with 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 mm -hmm. my mixing where I can just get it done. Do you know what I mean? I, I, don't, I because I'm because I'm recording, I'm writing. I don't yeah. want to get to a situation where I'm spending days thinking about what compressor I should put on. Okay. The, the the trick then is to is to have two compressors, an eleven seventy six emulation and an LA two A emulation. Those are the two compressors you need. I would also yeah. have a look at. I'd also have a look at you know isotope stuff. Yeah, I'm coming to that. Damn you! Sorry. Sorry. I mean, if you want to go the, the 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 standard route, you need a good EQ. You need a couple of good compressors, probably a couple of good EQs, and a couple of reverbs. You will make great sounding music like that because the music you're putting in is going to sound good. You're halfway there already. You've got a good arrangement, a good a good top line, and a good and a good lyric. Yeah. That's that's where most songs fall over before you've even started mixing them. Yeah. Um, the the Al, the Al Schmidt principle is have a great arrangement, put great mics up, have great players play, and basically put a flat line across the console, and it sounds yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. We uh, should we should we come back to this? We've got a couple yeah, of questions. Some questions. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Uh, Daniel Daniel B says, "Are you guys up for doing a live gig together when we can?" We were yeah. thinking we, we were uh, we were there was talk that we were going over to Nam uh, early this year to go and do a couple of products. Or well, early next year, as it would have. Well, it would no, have no, been, no, no, it was. Actually, I think it was for, for January this year. We were talking. What's going to be? We, that didn't happen in the end because no. of budget constraints. Uh, it of course was then talked about. We'll do it next year, and of course Nam 2020 is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm sure that will be back on the cards at some point. Yes, I think we should we should definitely do a live gig. Um, yeah. I think we need to write a few more songs first. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Re Rene, uh, right, you have to excuse me. Uh, it's, it's either Rene or Rene Tvet Peterson says, hi again, wondering about the difference between the features of the Two Notes Cat to X and the features within the Rev D20. I've been looking at some comparison on the net. Okay, so really different things uh and not so the, the, the obviously the rev d20 is an amplifier in itself uh but it has the, it has the torpedo interface in it so the difference between the capture x and the d20 on the actual torpedo side of things is the d20 is mono um you can only you can only come out mono while the capture x does stereo stuff it's got some clever uh, it's got some reverbs in there and exciters and a delay. I think it's got some sort of um, doubler, doubler sort of delay. Um, so do you, and, and next question is, do I need the captor? Do I need the captor X if I buy the Rift D20? No, no. The Rift D20 sounds sounds wicked. But if if you want if you want stereo effects, uh, then yes, you need that. You need the captor X. Hope that helps. Uh, and last question, I have a Katana Mark II 2x12, uh, same as James, actually. Good, what, good would be, what would be a, a good first tube amp? Excellent. Um, How much you got? 
yeah then, <laughs> yeah let's know your budget let's know your budget um great uh, okay awesome valve amp that's fairly reasonable is the fender hot rod hot rod hot rod deluxe sounds deluxe, great. Yeah. sounds great and it's not too expensive if you've got some more money and you want to go like the head route you know like head separate head cab that sort of thing um depends on your money it depends yeah. on the budget um massively because well my, my latest addiction is um synergy modules for, for the synergy head and uh, actually do you know what i am really surprised how much variation you can get between in, in that little module in this little module he says hang on out you come it's got a thousand dollars oh that's that's a fair that's a fair I've, got four, I've got four of these now so so i'm guessing you're in the states i would if you're in the States, i i would really look at that's gonna a, get you a really nice you can get you can get something nice for a grand yeah i yeah. i would have a look at some dr z stuff Ooh, I love yeah. Dr. Z amps. Dr. Z, so the Dr. Z, the Maz stuff is amazing. It sounds fantastic. It's really loud. Um, or if you've got a thousand, if you've got a thousand dollars, possibly a Rev D20. I don't know how much they are in the States, James. Um, so was, you could definitely get a second hand one with a cab, and that that's great. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, right. And, they, and they, they sound great and work, you know. And, and are, yeah, the, the great the pedal, 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 pedal. Yeah, it's brilliant. Pedal really good yeah yeah you won't yeah you won't look back once you start going down valve amps it'll be like oh wow this is this is it's, great it's, it's an expensive messy mess yeah 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 dr z amps amazing anyway uh back to it where, where, where did we get to where any were we i i had um i had a fender reverb deluxe oh, nice. in the corner over there it was too loud what well, was it a hot rod a hot rod deluxe uh yeah 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 they're great aren't they didn't they sound great oh i mean it was beautiful it yeah. was absolutely beautiful um but uh it was just too loud for here and you know for my ears i i couldn't you know because i wanted to get that crackle that sort of you know where it breaks a little bit i, yeah. I was looking for the chris isaac sound yeah and uh the guys down the shop again they were trying to give me the smaller one i was like no i want the bigger one you know i want the, the authentic <laughs> sort of you know Chris Isaac sound, and I, I had it in the corner, and I, I, I just couldn't turn it up. It was just so loud. You can always get attenuators. So attenuators are, are such a great way of going if you've got, yeah. because yeah, if you've got a valve amp, it's you know a valve amp has to be pushed to that certain level to get that sweet tone. You need to get yeah. the sweet, you know, um, well, it's, it's, yeah. it's ideal tone. What what so, is that? Is is it sort of some sort of driving or something? Yeah, no, it's it's just it's just every amp has like its optimum level of working. So, and and some people like some people like it even pushing it past that to, to you yeah. know to the point where it sounds to me sounds horrible. So things like if you listen to, uh, you know, uh, what's that? Was it wild? Not wild horses. What's it's uh ah? Oh, come to me in a minute. But anyway, there's a uh, yeah, it's, it's that Fender tweed sound that's that's just like collapsing in on itself. Yeah, the, so the valve just going no more. Yeah, yeah and the yeah. speaker. Yeah, uh, who was it? Who did that? Oh, it's gonna bug me. If if you if you were going out gigging, Paul, what would you take? Uh, depends what gig. If I if, if I had to take an amp, I would take. I'd could probably. Take <laughs> If it was a, uh, if it was like a, no, I'd probably take. Uh, I mean, I've got, I've got a couple of things that I would take with something. So I would take, I'd probably take the Rev D twenty and the Boss Tube Amp Expander, because then it, that can do everything. Yeah, I, I, I don't really get seller's remorse on gear because normally yeah. I, I do sell a lot of gear on eBay because. My my view is if I don't use something for a year, I don't yes. need. Yes. And it and and it's probably taking up rack space and whatever. Um, but I many many I mean a million years ago I sold a very old Fender Champ, one of the little baby ones, 
And I, I remember at the time being told that the sound I liked, because it was a, 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 it's a little, little tiny, I think it's about a five watt thing. The sound I liked from it was when it was cranked. Of course, I liked it like that because it, it was a little five watt amp being driven really hard yeah. and it was too loud. I was told to get rid of that amp. So I, I sold it to a keyboard player friend of mine. What amp was it? Sorry. Um, a Fender amp? Champ. A little, one oh, of the a little, little champ. champ. Yeah. Little nice. Champ. Yeah. Yeah, and I course. sold it for £25. Ah. You now could not get one of those for under a grand. Really? Really? Yeah. Really? They are ludicrous money. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, thanks, yeah, Low Fat no, Matt. No, Low Fat no, Matt's no, answered no, the Neil Young question. It was Neil Young. It was that, that, that amp on the absolutely collapsing in on itself. Yeah, he's right. I wasn't going to say that, Matt. Sure. <laughs> Sorry, Jack. Go on. Yeah, no, I, I, I you know, I, 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 I've got this thing, uh, this, this sort of, this sort of motto that if something is not sort of getting me where I need to go, or if it's not being used, it's got to go. Yeah. So a little bit like what you were saying, James, but I have regretted one thing that I sold. So I had an NT, NTR road mic mm -hmm. and, um, and it was, it wasn't that expensive, but it got me a sound live. If I put it, if I had it in front of me, it was a ribbon mic. And if mm. I sort of ran it through my um, 1073 and through a compressor, I just found the sweet spot of this mm. ribbon mic. And I put it in front of me and I would sing and play at the same time. And I took that sound for granted. I was like, oh, it's great. You know, but because actually when I go back to those videos, I go, oh, that sounds great. I shouldn't have got rid of that. Because uh, you know? yeah. Yeah. So sometimes when you know when you find that sweet spot, you just think, oh, my God, how can I get it back? You know? Well, you're lucky. You're lucky because it's not. That's not unobtainable, is it? It's not like no, no, you know, no. one of those no, mics. It's, it's like okay, I can get, I can pick up another one of those. It's not horrendous. No, no, no. I've I got a few things like, that I've. Sorry, mate. Go, carry on. Sorry. I, I don't. I think they're only like. Well, I say only, but you know, I think they're like. You're. You're right. They're not that expensive. Yeah. I've got a few things that I've sold in the past, though. That I've gone. Yeah, I should have kept that really. And the other one was my JCM eight hundred. I should not have sold that amp. What's that? An amp? Um, a Marshall J Marshall eighties JCM eight hundred. Brilliant, proper rock and roll amp. That and a Les Paul is the sound of rock. Yeah. And I should not have sold it, but <laughs> I needed the money, and that's normally why yeah. I sell things. I've never, I've, I've never sold. I've, I've got a couple of guitars over there that, even though they're maybe not the caliber of some of the other guitars I've got, I can't sell my Epiphone Sheraton, the kind of 335 copy, because it was my first electric guitar. I, yeah. I, I can't do it. No, no, no. Um, but there's a few things that I've sold and I've got. I had a, I had a um, Sans Amp PSA1, like guitar. I had one of them. Why did I get rid of that? Uh, exactly. Why did I get rid of it? I should not have got rid of it. I ended up using it for the, um, the, the crunch on on reverb vocals on delayed vocals in the end yeah. like, oh come on oh. do you know the other thing do you remember ada mp1s yes yes right. ADA, that is the sound of nuno beckle on you know the extreme yeah. the, the, yeah. the pornography album it sounds amazing i mean that, that, that it guitar now? no it's well it's a rack unit it's a preamp and i had i had a couple of those and you listen back to that guitar tone and you go that is proper good but I'm pretty sure that Duno Betancourt could pick up a Fisher Price guitar That's and still sound like that. Yeah, that is so true, actually. That is so true. Um, uh, what was the other stuff? Um, DOD? The Oh, no. I, no, I had to really? Pick it. Yeah. And, and I listened back to it and go, Sorry. it's like there's a few things that I've got. Um, that um, Alesis Wedge reverb. Oh, yeah, I've, yeah, yeah. I, I had one in the very early nineties and I loved it for a few things. I mean, back then I did not know what good reverb sounded like because I, that was what I had. I loved that thing. And it had a couple of really cool features. It was, it was my first stereo in stereo out reverb. Yeah. And it had a, a little impulse button that you could check the reverb you were going to get on it. Really and actually, yeah. It, yeah and it was a really good extra sample to add on snare drums. <laughs> so here, here's a question. Here's a question for you guys: If you could afford like a really expensive 
um what was is it black hills that really expensive reverb shadow that hills. really yeah shadow hills oh no shadow you mean bracasti james has got james has got bracasti james has got bracasti have you got one yeah aren't they like four grand or something depends who you know <laughs> <laughs> So, so my, my question was going to be, would you actually buy one? But obviously, yes. <laughs> do you know yeah. what? Do you know what the biggest yeah. waste of that is? It's on one patch. He has he has one patch, and that's it. It's like what is it? Like a plate or something? It is. I'm going to turn it on. Uh, uh, I think it's on. I think it's on one of the one of the plate patches because it sounds so good on drums. It's such a waste. Like it's not one... a waste. It's not a waste. It sounds amazing. It is on. But, but do you? But do you? But do you think right you? Plate. you do you feel like you get the hardware of the reverb? You're benefiting from it. I think nowadays, I, I think there's there's a few. Is it Seventh Heaven, James? Seventh Heaven is amazing. I was using yeah. Seventh. I was using it today on this on this session that I mixed. What's that? Is that because, a plugin? Yeah, it, it, it's basically the Procasti algorithms in a plugin. In, oh, right. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, wow. with Liquid Sonic Seventh Heaven, it sounds amazing. Um, wow. the, the reason I still like hardware is because i like the console workflow mm. however one thing i have done which a lot of people have gone oh that's quite clever is i'm using an apollo 16 uh, yeah, on my cool. on my um auxiliary paths on the console so where you'd have um a lexicon 480 uh an emt 140 plate or whatever I've got access to those on the console, but instead of it being routed to a piece of hardware, it's routing into the back of the interface, which is talking UA. Talking it to is UA. cool. That, that is a really good way of working. That is a really good way of it's working. A, it's a damn sight cheaper and more reliable than buying the hardware. Yeah. yeah. I was offered, actually, a, a real um, EMT250. Where are you going to keep that? Well, more, well, I would have found a home for it. But, but have you ever seen one? Jack, they're huge. No, oh, not, 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 oh, oh, the little, the little box one. The, the little one bin. With the handles, one with yeah, the handles. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. But still, you know, it's a fairly big chunk of thing. Yeah. And, and it is heavy. Yeah. And the only problem is it was in New York. And oh, yeah. if I was going to get it, I had to pay for it and ship it. Ooh. And I think the shipping would have been more expensive than the buying. Wow. I say. Yeah, nice. but there are there are some things. I'm I'm not that into vintage gear. I'm not someone who gets excited by oh, I've got a a, a, a Paul Tech from 1960 something or a an old um oh, Fairchild or anything like that. I'm not I don't get excited by vintage gear because for one reason, vintage gear breaks. And yeah. it costs a lot to keep it running. It does. That yeah. that is true. But James, uh, Jack, James has got so one of the ultimate consoles you could buy. One of the you know the uh, the ultimate mixing consoles that you could buy. So you had SSL, Neve, API, all all of that lot. But in the when was it? Was it the eighties? Uh, yeah. Uh, the the 80s, so so Focusrite came up with something called the for, the Forte. The Forte console. console. Well, it was it was the Focusrite Studio console was the official. It, it was, and it was like if you ever, if you ever went into a studio that had a forty console. So uh, Metropolis used to have one. If you, if you go to if you go to United in Los Angeles, they have still got a. Oh, was that working... JJP's room? Pardon? Was that it, JJP's room? It, it yeah. used to be JJP's room. Yeah, it's it, it's it's the big the, the console that's slightly kind of. Yeah, it goes round. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. Oh, I mean, stunning. you could you could cook an egg on the meter bridge. Yeah, it, like, it's, it was, but it sounded it sounded incredible. James has got right. right so, so what happened? They stopped making these consoles. They only uh, made, they only made I think they made eleven or twelve total, and a, a couple have been lost like through floods, like like when the when the Mississippi it was like the Mississippi was flooded or something. It was, it was it was the Hudson. It was um, <laughs> Katrina took took out um, SSR Studios in New York. So, so yeah, there's only a few of these things left. So people have broken them up and they've created uh, uh, like channel strips out of them. Worth, you know, worth a lot of money. James has got two, two of these channels in his loft and he won't get it. He just won't get them made into a. 
it's not won't. It's it's time and effort and mainly time. To be honest, I, I need to get a power supply made for them. Oh God, I so want so one. So what would you do? Would you run it with your desk or? I'd I'd run it as a line that the I've got the input module and the EQ module, and I'd run it as an inline into the console. Okay. Um, does it does it come with a compressor? No, there was no compressor on it. Wasn't there? I'm sure there was one. That, that was the one that Metropolis had compressors. Well, it's Metropolis. It came from, but bear in mind it was it was, was it? yeah it was it oh, was the oh, because Funky Junk had it. Um, and they, they cut it in half, and I got some of the some of the, the half that were cut in half. Wow! Because it was a ninety. It was a ninety. I think it was a ninety-six. They had. Oh man, it, it was massive. It was massive. Yeah. It was beautiful. But Paul, do, 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 do you miss sort of having a console or mixing on a console? Would you Would you want you know? Would you I want think... to mix on a console? Uh, I think the idea of it's really nice. Yeah. Bear in mind, most of what I do is not mixing. Yeah. Most of what I do is tracking, which is, and it, and for tracking, there is nothing faster than a console. I think it's just, it, it, it's just nice to have everything in front of you. So if you've got all your EQs and your compression, I mean, if you're using something like an SSL and you've got your EQs and your compression all in front of you, and then you can walk away from the mix and you can visually see everything. Yeah. So you can go, okay, well, the kick drum just still needs something else. So you can you can literally just go over there as opposed to sort of running up yeah. trying to, oh, there's a kick drum, click on there, right? Open that yeah. plugin. That is why. Because, you know, from what I sort of talking to, you know, people, it seems that, you know, the sound quality, you know, you can get it, you can get around the sound, you know, the plugins nowadays are just almost identical, you know? So it, it, it's almost a question of do you actually want that physical thing in front of you? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I completely agree. No, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to pay for the, for the, you know, the maintenance and the running of it. It costs. I mean, James, what, what, what do you reckon a SSL costs to run a year? Like, like a decent sort of oh, J or K series. Thousands. Yeah, because well, it's not. It's not just the power. It's the air conditioning to run. I mean, bear in mind, a, a console like that doesn't have a three or four U power supply. It has two racks, two refrigerator yeah, sized yeah. racks of power supplies and distribution and automation computer and all that sort of stuff. And they get seriously hot. Yeah, so it's yeah. all the all the air conditioning and the and the power that it costs to run it and stuff, they just cost a fortune. And, you, and if you turn it off, there's a fair chance it ain't gonna come back. <laughs> yeah, you have to leave it on. They yeah. they stay on 24-7, as does the air con. That's um crazy. whereas this desk, I turn off every night yeah because it's um it's got modern components it's got a modern power supply um i, I could turn it i you know i can turn it off two or three four times a day if i want to i, I don't yeah. generally when i come in here i turn it on in the morning turn it off at night um if i was mixing all the time i would not go for a, for an analog console i'd probably go for a control surface yeah, I, I've seen. But, I've seen a, I, I like. I like the idea of a control service. I, I've seen a couple down the shop again that are like very expensive. I mean, they're not cheap, but they're really expensive. But just the idea of having hands-on sort of situation, I think it, it's it's sort of appealing. It is. I've had and James has had quite a few of them, and the idea of it's great. The idea of it is fantastic. You have to invest in learning them and. Oh and sticking with it but and i can't i i the the only control surface i've fallen in love with and gone i'm going to learn that is this thing and it's not a control surface it's a mixer i absolutely adore yeah. working with this thing the thing about oh, control, so surfaces. control surfaces yeah 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 and hated yeah. them because they're slow oh, really? it shouldn't be slow it shouldn't be bank to here blah, 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 blah. it should be ah reach go yeah yeah if you've got if you're doing a mix of say like 100 tracks and you've got um, I mean, let's you know, most control surfaces are eight eight faders. Some are sixteen. I mean, obviously, you can get you know the 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 big avid one, but you're spending the same sort of money as if you'd bought a real console anyway. It's not saving yeah. you any money. But you, you know, so so you got six. You're working on sixteen tracks, and then you want to go right. Okay, well, I want to change the fader on on the on the kick drum, which is at you know Number track one, one. and and I'm a I'm at track one hundred. So now I've got to go click. Oh, of click, course. Click, 
click yeah. so you're going all the way back to the beginning and then you yeah. can use the fader but then most of the time most of these control surfaces haven't got any access to the plugins that you're that you're using so you still have to open yeah. all the plugins it's just it just ends up to be yeah it's great for getting a rough mix for like going oh yeah great push but like that just getting like a fader mix a level mix yeah and then switch switch the thing off yeah because <laughs> i don't know anyone that actually uses them for automation and do you know what one of the worst things i don't and i don't want to sort of burn any bridges here but i've had two sh sh should i not no don't okay <laughs> okay, no. okay. don't just don't because <laughs> because I could, I could jump in on that one i actually have, <laughs> i could jump in there as well and i'm not going to yeah 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 anyway oh, anyway we've, we've run a bit <laughs> we've run a bit past time We're we have oh really it's like a it's like a little it's, 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 this is like going down the pub isn't it you're just like you're chatting yeah, with other musicians yeah. it's the closest it's the closest thing to going down the pub at the moment well hopefully um uh, according to our fearless leader, thank you, Boris, we will be out of some form of lockdown next week, um, which means hopefully that Paul and I can get together and make some more videos together. Um, I saw Jack... that video that you did with the acoustic. It was a really good video. Oh, cheers, it? mate. Yeah, and, it's uh, fun, isn't it? It's more fun doing videos when there's two people. Yeah, yeah. and I think, it's, I think it's more entertaining. I think you get more out of it. You, you're certainly able to cram more into it because you've yeah. got two people bouncing off each other. Um, yeah. Jack, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you yes. on this evening. Uh, I'm looking forward to working on the new song very much. Yeah. Uh, and I'm also looking forward to us all getting together in a studio very soon yeah. to work can, on. Can I say, to, uh, if anyone wants to check out, Jack's starting to do some videos on YouTube about um sort of songwriting and you know give us some give us some of the titles that you're going for jack so it's up to people can... of Seth saying yes uh the one i did today was the greatest day in my career was the day that i realized that i'm not actually as good as i thought i was <laughs> so just yeah, general all of those musician um, yeah musician type interesting stuff so it's so a well worth yeah. checking out well worth checking out so um yeah do that Great it's stuff. So stuff. thank you, Paul. And it's been been a lot of been a lot of fun, guys. You know, I, I, I love chatting with you guys just because I, I feel like I'm learning, you know. Uh so I, I've seen your other shows and I, I felt a bit conscious coming on tonight because I've seen your other guests and they really are the real McCoy. <laughs> so yeah. Oh no, not at all, mate. No, not at all. We we'll say we're trying to bring a slightly different spin on it from you know from a lot of the tech stuff that's out there you know paul and i can talk tech till the cows come home but it's nice to talk about yeah, something yeah. else as well which is great um yeah. so thank you for joining us jack thank you out there in youtube and facebook live land for joining us we'll be back next week um i think we'll probably do a, a we'll fly a duo flight next week yeah um talk more tech and maybe have some toys to play with who knows who knows hey, when, what might happen this week when's your is um anyone news on your uh uh neural dsp thing turning up no no nothing at all um i probably should hit them up this week i'll give, give them a call and find out because i think guitar guitar are working just they're not opening the shop's not open but yeah, i think yeah. they're doing orders and stuff like that so i will find out because that's definitely one uh, i'm really looking forward to getting on getting to getting my hands on i don't think my 11 racks looking forward to it <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, have you got an 11 rack yeah did you I, like I, them? Because I, I, I see them every now and again second hand and they seem to be going around. I absolutely adore the thing. I will never sell oh, really? it. I, this, this was the first one that came to the UK. Yeah, they're, they're actually, they sound really good. I really like, I really like them. I really like the way they sound. And the fact that they're, you know, over 10 years old now, the fact that uh, you know, 12 years old now. I picked mine up from the States, mate. You, there was a time, you probably can still do this, where you can you can buy them brand new what they used to do, they used to ship with a copy of Pro Tools. So the, the shop used to take the copy of Pro Tools out of the box and sell the 11 rack brand new for 200 quid. Mm. Oh, you can get them on eBay still for that sort of money. You won't, you, won't, yeah. you won't get the copy of Pro, Pro Tools. But no, I, I, genuinely, it is probably in here at the moment. It is... Hang on, I'm looking around. Other than maybe a few drums it is the oldest piece of kit in here by it? Some mar yeah by some margin nice cool. no actually sorry it's the oldest piece of kit that i've got in here 
for, for me. It's not the oldest piece of kit because I think the Dolby A's are older than that. Oh god, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's certainly getting on a bit, and some of my guitars are a bit older as well. But you know, it it's yeah. it's, it's uh, for for tech, it still stands up. It still sounds it's, amazing. Yeah, it's a great um, thing. So, yeah, well, for, 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 me. Well, 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 on the Nor the Norwegian equivalent of eBay, I would definitely um invest. Yeah. I see. I see them around. I, I was thinking about that or the other one. What was the other one called? The Kemper, Kemper. The Kemper, Kemper. yeah. The, Ke yeah, the Kemper. So, yeah, I, the Kemper's a bit it. different. It's a bit more modern than. It's, yeah. it's a bit more updated. It does a lot more. Yeah, and it's a lot. It's a lot more expensive as well. But yeah. 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 So guys, this is this is my studio. So next time you guys come and visit me, or James, if you want to come over, this is you know that's so good. Sounds like fun. Great stuff. Well, thank you. Thanks again, Jack. Thanks, everyone out there for, for joining us. And we will see you again next week, 8 p.m. Um, same bat time, same bat channel. Take care, everyone. Have a safe Thanks, week. Guys. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.